your entire way of life, our world as we know it, will completely stop without credit. And credit is based on confidence and with what's coming and what's going to happen with, you know, con derivative contracts in the, you know, couple quadrillion uh, breaking, there's not going to be anything left standing except for you're watching Silver News Daily. Subscribe for more. Could silver be the ultimate safeguard as the world prepares for an economic reset? Bill Holter believes so. And today, we're doubting why silver might just be your safest bet in these uncertain times. As geopolitical tensions rise and dollar teeters on the edge of collapse, the global financial landscape is shifting in ways that could change everything. But there's a silver lining, literally. Stick around as we explore how silver could protect your wealth in ways you've never imagined and why weighing could cost you more than you think. I do what this gentleman owns or doesn't own, uh, but I would ask, what's your definition of a stable company? I mean, a, a stable a stable company to me is something that extracts from the ground, uh, grows something, makes something that's indispensable to human life. Um, if you're going to tell me that, uh, you know, NVIDIA or, I mean, just go on down the list of all of the seven, you know, the, the, the seven stocks. The Magnificent are Seven any, uh, Tech Companies, yeah. yeah. Magnificent Seven. Are any of those companies, do you consider them stable? Um, I don't. I, I mean, the, the valuations are crazy. And I think the world could probably the world could probably turn and function. I mean, some obviously some things would change, but I don't think people would die if uh, if if NVIDIA went out of business or, well, maybe some people would die if Amazon went out of business because, you know, you point and click and boom, the stuff shows up at your door the next day. So I would have to ask first, what is your definition of a stable company. I would also say, okay, so your retirement is secure now on the dividends you're getting. Um, what happens if we, not if, but when we go into a severe depression, those dividends get cut and we've got massive inflation at the same time and puts you at a point where versus what you're buying right now, you're getting say 25 cents on the necessary dollar to live. So I, I would say don't be smug. Um, to me, stability is having your money in either gold or silver because it cannot go bankrupt and you can always sell portions of your gold and silver to live on. I mean, if you go back to the year uh, 2020, gold has risen, what, 9.7 or 9.9% 9 .9 per year. If since 2020, you sold uh, five percent of your gold along the way to live on, you'd still have a, a bunch of gold left, and your uh, I mean you, you'd have you'd have more in dollars today than you would have had back in 2020 because gold has gone up faster than you are taking out five percent. And I personally use silver as a bank account. I vault it. I mean, if I get a, a big check or whatever, I buy silver. Whether it goes up or down or goes sideways or whatever, I don't care. If I need a chunk of money, I'll liquidate it. But I know that I cannot wake up tomorrow morning and my metal's gone. It's, it's bankrupt because you can't go bankrupt. Gold and silver are wealth. Gold and silver are money themselves. As silver continues to rally, breaking past key psychological barriers, the market is sending a clear signal. Something big is brewing. We've seen silver hover around that crucial dollar thirty mark, a level that's more than just a number. It's a threshold that could open the floodgates for a significant price surge. But what does this mean for you? According to recent technical analysis, silver's current momentum suggests that we're just scratching the surface. Market experts are on the dollar thirty one point five zero to dollar thirty two range as the next big target, and if silver breaches these levels, we could be looking at a sustained upward trend. But let's not forget, this isn't just about short-term gains. 
The real story here is how silver is positioning itself as a long-term store of value, especially as other assets begin to falter. Bill Holter emphasizes that the recent bullish trend in silver is no fluke. It's a reflection of growing concerns over the global economy, and the smart money knows it. The potential pullbacks that we might see along the way are not signs of weakness, but rather opportunities for value hunting, a chance to secure your position before silver makes its next big leap. So while some might be cautious about chasing silver at these elevated levels, Holder suggests that the real risk lies in not being prepared for what's coming next. On. Once it's electronically held at the transfer agent, and you're going to have to call your company, uh, you know, whatever uh, stock the, the, the company that you own, you need to call the company and ask them, who is your transfer agent? So once it gets transferred, you call that transfer agent directly and you tell them, I have X amount of shares of XYZ stock that you're now holding. It just arrived a couple days ago. I would like a certificate. And what they'll do, uh, you, I mean, there, there is paperwork. They will uh, have you fill out the paperwork that needs to be filled out. And generally, you're talking, I don't know, now it's, it's probably up to $25 to get a certificate. But they will physically send you a stock certificate. Your, your shares will no longer be at the broker. Your shares will no longer be at the transfer agent. The shares will be in your hands. Don't lose your shares. Um, and I actually did uh, lose a few shares uh, when my house burned down back in 2011. I got the majority of them out. There were a few straggling shares. But whatever, uh, if you lose them, they, they got stolen, they got burned up or whatever, you're going to have to pay a 3 to 4% surety bond fee to get those replaced. And that's a nightmare. But the move from your broker holding your stock, moving it to the transfer agent under DRS, and then having the certificate sent out to you should take no more than two or three weeks time to do. It's It still can be done. Uh, they, your broker will make it more difficult because your broker will say, what are you, crazy? Nobody does that. Well, you got to protect yourself. Nobody's going to protect you. And the reason they're giving you pushback is they've already let your shares out. That Silver has always had a unique place in history, especially during times of economic turmoil. When paper currencies lose their value, People have consistently turned to silver and gold as safe havens. But why? The answer lies in history itself. Throughout centuries, silver has been the go-to asset during crises. Whether it was the collapse of empires, wars, or financial panics, it has a track record of preserving wealth when everything else fails. Remember the hyperinflation in Weimar, Germany, or the economic chaos in Zimbabwe, in those times, people turned to silver and gold to protect their savings as their national currencies became worthless overnight. Bill Holder often points out that these aren't just stories from the past, but lessons for today. He warns that history has a way of repeating itself, especially in the financial world. With the current instability in global markets and the increasing devaluation of the dollar, Holter believes that silver's historical role as a hedge against economic collapse is more relevant than ever. As the dollar's value continues to erode, silver isn't just a relic of the past, it's a strategic asset for the future. And as history has shown, those who recognize this early on are the ones who safeguard their wealth when the dust settles. Absolutely. And if you don't do it, you should have your, your brain examined. Because think about a stock certificate as the same thing as the title to a, a car or a truck or the deed to a house. It's proof of your ownership. Um, when the system goes down, your shares, I mean, your stock may go down, it may go up, who knows. Um, but when the system goes down and all these get bailed in, unless somebody comes to your house and steals your certificate, you have it. You have proof of ownership. And you're going to be able to present that at a later date and say, these are my shares. I'd like to sell them or do whatever you want with them. Um, I'm going to go over this on how to do it because 
I, I get bombarded after I talk about this with, well, should I do this? Should I do that? How do I do it? I'm going to tell you how to do it now. Please don't email me because I'm, I'm not going to respond because I'd have to respond, you know, 50 or 100 times after every interview. So what you do is you tell your broker that you want your shares to be sent to the transfer agent under DRS. That stands for direct registration. And what happens is it's the shares are no longer electronically held at your broker. They're electronically held at the transfer agent. There's no fee to do that. Um, if you tell your broker outright, I just want you to send me the certificate, they'll probably push back because, again, your shares are already lent out. And they realize you're going to have to go get those shares in order to give you your shares back. So, And, and they'll charge you 500 bucks to do it, and it'll take forever and ever to get done. So tell your broker you want to transfer your shares to the transfer agent. That should take two or three days to get. As we navigate through one of the most turbulent periods in recent history, geopolitical tensions are escalating on multiple fronts. From the ongoing conflicts in Eastern Europe to the trade wars brewing between global superpowers, these tensions are more than just headlines. They're the cracks in the foundation of the current economic order. Bill Holter emphasizes that these geopolitical shifts are not just isolated events. They are deeply intertwined with the global financial system. As nations engage in economic warfare, imposing sanctions and cutting off trade routes, the stability of the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency is being questioned like never before. Holter warns that the more these tensions rise, the closer we inch towards a significant devaluation of the dollar. But why is this important for silver? The answer lies in the shifting trust in fiat currencies. As confidence in the dollar wanes, nations and individuals alike will seek alternatives, safe havens that have stood the test of time. Silver, with its intrinsic value and historical resilience, is poised to be one of those alternatives. Holter points out that in times of such uncertainty, silver isn't just an investment. It's a strategic asset, a form of financial insurance that protects against the chaos that geopolitical tensions inevitably bring. The question isn't if, but when these shifts will trigger a fight to silver as the safe haven of choice. From an asset side, we live in fairy tale land. I mean, if you bought a house five years ago for a quarter of a million and now it's five, six, seven hundred thousand, do you really believe that's on solid footing? And there's people, you know, that have bought houses over the last year, two years. I mean, last year, the year before, what did you hear about? You heard about bidding wars. Somebody offering a house for 500000 and it ultimately was bid up to 625000 within two days of coming on the market. It was a bubble. It's going to pop. And as the economy uh, deepens into a recession you're going to see more layoffs. You're already seeing layoffs. You're going to see people that cannot pay their mortgages. Houses are going to go into foreclosure. And the the bidding in foreclosure, you know, are, are simply uh, fractions of what the current prices, I'm not going to say values, but what the current prices are. And, you know, that $500,000 house five years ago, it's probably going to change hands at three or four hundred thousand at foreclosure. So it wipes out all equity because most people don't put down more than 10 percent. Some put down 20 percent. But all of that is going to be chewed up. Somebody has got to eat those losses. And the, the, the banks uh, hold some of the mortgages. The mortgages are held by pensions. Pensions are going to eat the losses. And I'm just talking about housing now. Look at commercial real estate. Look at high-rise office buildings. Look at hotels. I mean, there was, and I can't remember where it was. I posted it about two weeks ago. Uh, there was an office building, and I believe it was in New York City, uh, that actually just changed hands at about 6% of what it, changed, what it traded at in 2006. And, and the losses were about $200 million. Somebody eats that. 
that doesn't just get swept under a rug. And it's somebody's balance sheet is ultimately going to reflect that $200 million loss. And you're talking about, you know, a, call it a trillion dollar market uh, just in commercial alone. So where we stood uh, a year ago or 15 months ago when those banks went under, I mean, we're on, on much less solid ground. I mean, we're, the whole system is, is literally trying to stand in quicksand. And then we can add one more thing to it. Well, we can add a lot to it. Um, you can add the fact that we have an election in November. And if it looks like uh, the powers that are in place now are not going to be able to cheat enough to stay in power, there will be a false flag. Markets will outright close. Um, the other thing between now and the election is the huge BRICS meeting in the middle of October. And basically what that is, is the world telling the United States and the U.S. dollar to piss off. We don't want to play in your sandbox anymore because you're bullies, you're liars, you're cheaters. And a contract means nothing because, you know, you do whatever you're going to do. I mean, look at what's happened with Russia. We've confiscated 300 billion and we're already borrowing small portions of that to fund Ukraine. The U.S. dollar has long been the cornerstone of the global financial system, but cracks are starting to show. Inflation is on the rise, national debt is ballooning, and central banks are printing money at an unprecedented rate. These factors are all contributing to a growing sense of unease about the future of the dollar. Bill Holder argues that we are witnessing the beginning of the end for the dollar's dominance, and the implications are profound. Holter points out that the dollar's value has been eroding steadily, and this trend is likely to accelerate as the world loses confidence in the currency. The Federal Reserve's attempts to manage the economy through monetary policy are increasingly seen as stopgap measures that address symptoms rather than the underlying issues. As faith in the dollar wanes, the world is looking for alternatives, and silver is emerging as a key player in this transition. But why silver? Unlike fiat currencies, silver has intrinsic value. It's a tangible asset that can't be devalued by government policy. This makes it an attractive option to those looking to protect their wealth as the dollar declines. Holter stresses that as the dollar's fall accelerates, the demand for silver will skyrocket, driving its price higher and cementing its role as a hedge against currency devaluation. For those who understand what's coming, Silver represents not just an opportunity, but a necessary move to save allows stability in the face of the dollar's the, ongoing the, the brokerage house to lend your securities. So you put stocks in today, and by tomorrow morning, they're already lent out. Um, I mean, you have to ask yourself, how is it possible that these, these major Wall Street firms have huge office buildings, they fly around in private jets, uh, they go everywhere in limos. Where did that money come from? Well, it didn't come from the $7.95 that they charge you for whether it's a $10,000, $100,000, million, or $10 million trade. It's a flat fee of $7.95. There's no way they're making money on that. The way they're making money is by lending your securities out. So if you have a margin call, or if you have a margin account, that's a huge mistake because your shares are not even in that account the day after uh, the day after you deposit them. Um, even a cash account holding in a cash account, uh, you will be bailed in. Again, watch the great taking. I just posted it again on my site. Uh, I think it was uh, Saturday or maybe yesterday. Spend the hour to watch that because all of your assets, when this thing busts, all of your asset, assets are going to be taken over by whoever the institution is to save their own bacon, not you. Uh, and just to illustrate, so let's say that you've got to put 50% up uh, to buy uh, 50% is your money, 50% is margin. So you got a $100 stock, you put up 50 bucks, and they lend you $50. And the stock, instead of going up, I mean, if it goes up to 15, you doubled your money. 
because you only have you've only got five in it. If it drops from ten uh, or from whatever uh, from ten to five, you've lost all your money, and you're required to keep. I believe it's thirty percent margin. Uh, I might be higher. I'm not. I don't. I don't know where the numbers are now. But when I was a broker, you had to have at least thirty percent margin, and if you dipped below that, then you would get a margin call. So if the stock went from ten to to seven ninety nine. You had a margin call from eight dollars down because your margin, what you put up, was not sufficient to cover it. Um, it's a double-edged sword. It's great when prices go up, and it's disastrous when prices go down because when you get a margin call and you can't meet it, your firm is going to dump it on the market and get whatever price they can because they're protecting themselves. They lent you money; they're protecting their loan. Um, so you have absolutely no, no choice, no say whatsoever as to how your position gets sold. It will just get dumped and you're not going to get the best price. You know, you're going to get, you're, you're going to get knocked out of your position. And as we face the possibility of a significant economic shift, many are asking, what happens if the dollar collapses? In such a scenario, how will people conduct everyday transactions? Bill Holder has long argued that silver will play a crucial role in a world where traditional currencies lose their value. Imagine a world where the dollar is no longer the standard for trade and inflation has rendered cash nearly worthless. What would you use to buy goods and services? Holter suggests that silver, with its historical role as money, would likely become a primary medium of exchange. Whether it's for bartering or direct purchases, silver's inherent value makes it an ideal candidate for such a role. But it's not just theoretical. We've already seen how, in times of crisis, precious metals become the currency of choice. For instance, in Venezuela, where hyperinflation has decimated the Bolivar, people have turned to gold and silver for everyday transactions. Holter believes that a similar shift could happen on a larger scale if the dollar collapses. Moreover, with more states in the U.S. passing legal tender laws that recognize silver and gold as acceptable forms of payment, the infrastructure for a silver-based economy is quietly being built. Holter points out that these developments are not just legal formalities. They are preparations for a potential future where silver becomes a necessity rather than just an investment. Yeah, post uh, and if, if that's well what's the on the books, keeps commerce alive. it's a multiple of that. It might be double. It could be five times. It could be, it could be ten times. Um, I mean, this could be a, a two hundred trillion dollar carry trade. Um, what happened was the the yen started to strengthen, and that created a panic uh, to buy back yen and. and and sell the dollar positions. Uh, I've read where I, I think I read in, in Zero Hedge where someone was saying that uh, they covered seventy five percent of that outstanding trade in in those three days and last week. And I call absolute bullshit on that because it took thirty years. I mean, this has been going on for 30 years. It took 30 years to put that position together. And they're saying it unwound almost all of it in three days. Absolutely not even a possibility. Uh, one thing I've noticed this year is there's very, very few people even mentioning derivatives. And derivatives were the problem in 2008. They are the problem now. Uh, I mean, you're talking about a, a $2 trillion dollar uh, market, all the assets in the world add up to barely half of that. So it's it's truly the case of the tail uh, synthetically wagging the actual dog. Uh, and I would just say that what you saw that Thursday, Friday, and the following Monday is a precursor of what's to come. It basically opened up the door uh, to the system completely being margin called. And that's that's what we're going to face over the next few months.
As the world grapples with the potential decline of the dollar, an intriguing trend is quietly gaining momentum, the increasing acceptance of silver as legal tender. Across the United States, more and more states are recognizing the value of silver and gold, passing laws that allow these precious metals to be used for everyday transactions. Bill Holter sees this as a significant step towards a future where silver might once again play a central role in our monetary system. Currently, 23 states have passed legal tender laws that eliminate sales taxes on the purchase of gold and silver coins, making it easier for individuals to use these metals in transactions. But this is just the beginning. Holter believes that as the dollar continues to weaken, more states, and potentially even entire countries, will follow suit, further embedding silver into the fabric of everyday commerce. But why is this happening now? The answer lies in the growing distrust of fiat currencies and the desire to return to something tangible, something that has real value. Silver, with its long history as a reliable store of wealth, fits this need perfectly. Holter argues that these legal tender laws are not just about giving people an alternative. They're about preparing for a future where silver could be the backbone of a new, more stable financial system. This shift towards recognizing silver as legal tender is more than just a trend. It's a signal that the world is beginning to hedge against the instability of the dollar. As more states pass these laws, the infrastructure for a silver-based economy is quietly being established, making it easier for silver to step into the role it once held in the global economy. Holter suggests that this is a clear indicator that those who understand the implications of these changes should start uh, preparing gold now. maple leaves or silver and if you can find canadian junk which is very very hard to find you would want that uh your next best would be uh, canadian maple leaves as an american you want the coin of the realm you want uh gold eagles or pre-1933 gold and in silver as it stands right now for what possible reason would you buy any any other form of silver right now because junk is basically the same price as bars or generic coin or whatever a year ago there was a ten dollar premium so the premiums have evaporated you're buying silver in basically its cheapest form and by far and away the form of junk is the absolute best form for an american to own it's the smallest denomination it can't be counterfeited it's readily recognizable, and, and it's U.S. Mint lineage. I mean, junk is the absolute best form for an, America, uh, for an American to own, and I don't know if I'm the largest broker in the country uh, with, with junk silver on the books, but I'm definitely one of the 10 largest brokers in the country uh, as far as getting junk silver in customers hands because that's really all i've done since uh i'm going to say 2017 and other than ira accounts where you've got to do something that's 99.9 in which case i've done silver uh i mean yeah have i done a, a few bars or generics because you know people are jumping up and down no i don't want junk i want the crappy bars i want the crappy generics um, those are not going to trade. You will not be able to bar, barter with a generic coin or a bar when this thing goes down because the other side of the transaction is going to look at it and say, how do I know this is real? Because they're easily counterfeitable. Junk, you cannot counterfeit. If you had a counterfeit dime or a quarter, they, you know, brand new, they'd be shiny. And if somebody wants to give you a shiny 1937 dime, run away from it because there's no way in hell that that's a real dime or quarter or whatever. It has to show where. As the world teeters on the edge of economic uncertainty, the potential for silver to become a dominant currency in underground markets and parallel economies is growing more likely. Bill Holder has long warned that in the event of a dollar collapse, traditional forms of commerce could break down giving rise to alternative markets where silver could reign supreme. Underground markets have historically emerged in times of crisis, 
where conventional currencies lose their value and trust in the financial system erodes. In such scenarios, people turn to tangible assets, gold, silver, and even barter, to conduct their transactions. Holter points out that we're already seeing early signs of this shift in countries experiencing hyperinflation or severe economic instability, where silver is used not just for savings, but for everyday purchases. But what would this look like on a global scale? Holter envisions a world where silver becomes the preferred currency in parallel economies that develop outside the traditional financial system. These economies could operate alongside or even replace existing markets, especially if government interventions or restrictions make conventional trade difficult. In these environments, silver's portability, recognizability, and intrinsic value would make it the ideal medium of exchange. Moreover, as more people and businesses recognize the potential of silver in these alternative markets, demand could skyrocket, further driving up its value. Holter suggests that those who anticipate this shift and accumulate silver now will not only preserve their wealth, but also position themselves advantageously in a world where silver becomes the lifeblood of a new economic order. The rise of these underground markets is not just a possibility. It's a likely outcome if current economic trends continue, making silver just more than just say understand. And I typically a use a loaf of bread as an example. There's a dozen or more uses of credit between the farmer when he's planting the seed to that final loaf of bread. I mean, the farmer's going to borrow money for fertilizer. He's going to borrow for seed, borrow for diesel. He's got a harvest. Then it's got to get trucked, and truckers use credit. It's got to get trucked to a silo. Then it's got to get, uh, and obviously the, the silo is paying customers out, probably not out of their pocket. They're using credit. Then it's got to get shipped to whatever processing center. The processing center, the, the truck uses credit to get it there. The processing center uses credit. And then they bake the loaf of bread and they ship it to the to the grocery store. The grocery store is is buying stuff on credit, probably 30 or 60 day credit. So the whole way along, there's credit being used. If the credit is not available in any of those functions, the loaf of bread never arrives to the to the store. And that's the entire system. Everything you do, whether you turn the lights on, you turn your TV on, you get in your your truck, uh, you know, and you want to go get gasoline. Everything, everything I just talked about, there's a use of credit for those to function. And when credit breaks, everything will stop. Your entire way of life, our world as we know it, will completely stop without credit. And credit is based on confidence. And with what's coming and what's going to happen with, you know, con derivative contracts in the, you know, couple quadrillion uh, breaking, there's not going to be anything left standing except for gold and silver as money. There will be no money other than gold or silver that has not bankrupted because that's the problem with fiat currencies. They're credit based. And when credit fails, so will the fiat currencies. As we look toward the future, one of the most critical factors that will influence the value of silver is the balance between its supply and demand. Bill Holder has been vocal about the growing demand for silver, not just as a hedge against economic uncertainty, but also for its vital role in various industrial applications. This dual demand, both as a safe haven asset and as a key component in technology, could drive silver prices to unprecedented levels. Silver is unique in the sense that it straddles both worlds. It's a precious metal with intrinsic value and a critical industrial material. It's used in everything from solar panels and electronics to medical devices and renewable energy technologies. As the global push towards green energy intensifies, the demand for silver is expected to surge, further tightening the market. Holter emphasizes that this isn't just about demand. It's also about supply constraints. 
Silver mining has its limits, and with the increasing industrial demand, we could see significant shortages in the years to come. These shortages would not only boost prices, but could also lead to a scramble for available silver, making it even more valuable as an asset. Moreover, as silver becomes more scarce, its role as a store of value will be amplified. Investors and nations alike may begin hoarding silver, recognizing its potential to protect wealth in a world where fiat currencies are losing their purchasing power. Holter predicts that this combination of rising industrial demand and constrained supply will create a perfect storm, driving silver prices to levels we haven't seen before. For those paying attention, this presents a clear opportunity. By understanding the supply and demand dynamics at play, savvy investors can position themselves to benefit from what could be one of the most significant market shifts in recent history. As Holder suggests, silver isn't just a defensive play. It's a strategic asset with the potential for substantial gains as the world transitions to a new economic reality. Well, the safest place is in your own hands. Uh, and I, I tell people all the time, as far as your gold is concerned, get your gold delivered to you and hide it somewhere. I mean, there's not too many people that are going to be able to buy more than, say, two or 3,000 ounces of gold. That's hideable. That's, you can bury that. You, I mean, you can put it in your attic, put it in your basement. Uh, put it under, you know, inside a potted plant. But once you're talking about silver, if you're talking about big, you know, bigger money, even a half a million dollars, trying to store a half a million dollars worth of silver, that's hard. Um, you should definitely have uh, junk silver on hand. I tell people they should have a minimum one bag per person in your household. But when you're talking bigger money, storage is an issue. Um, myself personally, I, I store in North Dakota. Uh, one reason I store, and there's two, two vaults that I use up there. Um, one reason is that, uh, North Dakota has their own banking system. They're not part of the federal reserve system. So theoretically you could never have a federal agent walk in and say, tell us who your customers are. Um, and I, I'm probably talking out of school here, um, uh, and I won't mention the, the company name or whatever, uh, but uh, the, the, the big storage companies that you know their names, those are easy targets. The government would only have to go to their headquarters and say, tell us who all your customers are and throw your doors open because we're confiscating everything. So I would look for, uh, if you, you know, if you're going to store, I would look for a private non-bank vault that is not publicly traded does not have a headquarters that the fence could go to and say, you know, you've got 15, 20 different locations. Tell us who your customers are. As we bring all these elements together, it becomes clear that silver is not just another investment. It's potentially the ultimate wealth protector in a rapidly changing world. Bill Holder's insights have shown us that the global economic landscape is shifting and with the dollar's decline, the demand for a reliable store of value has never been greater. Silver stands out in this scenario because it offers a unique combination of historical stability, practical utility, and increasing demand. Unlike fiat currencies, which can be printed at will, silver supply is limited and its value intrinsic. This makes it an ideal hedge against the ongoing devaluation of the dollar and the potential collapse of the current financial system. But this isn't just about safeguarding wealth. It's also about positioning oneself for the future. As we've discussed, the acceptance of silver as legal tender is growing. Underground markets are likely to emerge. And the supply-demand dynamics are set to drive prices higher. Holter believes that those who act now, who recognize the signals and start accumulating silver, will not only protect their assets, but could see significant returns as silver rises to meet these challenges. In conclusion, the world is indeed prepared to go back to silver and for good reason. Whether it's as a hedge against inflation, 
a tool for bartering in parallel economies, or a core component of future technologies, silver is poised to play a critical role in the coming years. As Bill Holder has consistently warned, the time to act is now. Don't wait until it's too late. Consider silver as your safeguard in these uncertain times. And remember, this isn't financial advice, but a perspective to consider as we navigate the economic uncertainties ahead. Stay informed, stay prepared, and protect your wealth as the world shifts toward a new financial reality.